over to our panel of export experts on the desk. Thank you, gentlemen. And we've talked about it throughout the day, but AHQ, no shortage of aggression here in this game. Yeah, and you saw it from the outset. They were, what, blew five summoner spells to go for the first blood. And this isn't the first time they've done this. Against Yoi Flash Wolves, game one in their finals, they did the exact same thing and came up with absolutely nothing. Destroyed their early game, but this time they threw all of it into the bottom lane. They came up huge. They got the first blood. They completely destroyed the Urgot. Like, he was a non-factor for the next 35 minutes of the game and until the Nexus exploded, and you really have to hand it for AHQ. They continue to fight, they continue to eke out small advantages, and this team, if they get rolling, is so fun to watch. Yeah. And once they did get that kill onto Steelback, they kept coming back to that lane. Mountain did not let the pressure up, and he was finding really unique gank pads and gank timings that you wouldn't expect. It's kind of like when he's playing Jarvan, he's like, I'm going to come behind your turret, flash EQ, really overextend for it. This game, he's like, I'm sitting in Dragon Pit for 30 seconds before this gank comes out. And they, they, they sensed it too. They were like, all right, maybe he's here. No, wait. And then they kept going back and forth. And then as soon as they walked too far forward, that's really good instincts by Mountain and really good patience as well. I think it's credit to AHQ, obviously, focus the Urgov, immobile champion, no real peel with the Nautilus, particularly in the laning phase, but a little disappointing from Rain over. You know, Sidwani has impact in the early game. She's got a knockoff, she's got the slows, the red buff. She could have been down there, bottom main. They dove so many times and were multiple times just somebody needed to be there. I, I, I don't think you knock Rain over that hard. He was 2 1 and 1 at 4 minutes 50 seconds. He was cleaning up the kills whoa, whoa. when Westor went down there. He was doing a really good job on set Could have one. been there earlier, though. I mean, those early tower dives, I mean, like, they took forever to set those up, and they didn't even use a teleport to actually get them going. Yeah, so I think that's the part that I think is bad. When you have five summoners blown, you can, you know, be there. Like, just start on that side of the map, stay on that side of the map. Something's bound to happen. Well, I would say what was questionable for me was Rain, uh, Rain over visiting the top lane so often with Huni and not finding successful tower dives there. Now, before we continue our discussion about this matchup, we are going to send it over to Shox for a first-hand account of AHQ's victory. Thank you very much, Dash. I'm joined here by Westdoor after that very impressive victory of AHQ over Fnatic and helped by uh, our interpreter, Peter. First off, congratulations. Very impressive victory, as said. And you decided to go for the Fizz after having a rough game versus EDG. What made you so confident to pull that out versus Febovin in this matchup? Uh, 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 so the first game, uh, our game plan was around Callista, so I wanted to play a more supportive champion. This game, because we have Sivir, we were very heavy into diving into the other team. So I picked this, which is a great pick. Quite a lot of diving indeed. Now, Westor, you guys, this can be called an upset, taking down Fnatic after their game one performance. Last year when I talked to you at the World Championship, you guys took down EDG in an upset. But does your team have what it takes to be more than that upset team? Can you guys make that work and maybe grab a title here at MSI? Uh, 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 we need to work on our communication and we also need to make sure that our early game is flawless. Uh, this way we can come out on victory and uh, be considered a strong team in the region. All right, we'll be looking out for that. Finally, I uh, heard that it's your first time over here in America and you have a lot of fans here as well. How has the experience been just coming over here and getting to play here with a lot of these great players from all over the world? Uh, uh, I love America. <laughs> well, everyone here loves you. Congratulations, fantastic victory in Western HQ over Fnatic. And we're going to go back over to Dash and the guys over at the desk. <laughs> 
Thank you, Shocks. A lot of applause there for Westor. Quite a performance he put up. But I want to return to our point about the aggression between these two teams and, and throw to you, Crumbs, the replay that we have 19 minutes into the game because we saw all 10 players in this game meet up in the mid lane for an all-out brawl. Now, Westor obviously loves America because this fight was so chaotic, he was the only one that had enough freedom to do anything. <laughs> Let's be honest, nobody has a clue what's going on here. This fight starts at the most random things. Hecarim TPs, it's a 2v2 and Cassiopeia can't follow up. And you see all members are coming from all corners of the map for this. You know, they get all called down. They disengage now. Hecarim re uh, Rexide re-engages. Sivir is staying outside, so now, okay. Cassio PLT comes back in, they're thinking, let's engage. Oh, we didn't realize Fizz was here. Fizz now switches <laughs> targets away from the Urgot, goes on the Cassiopeia, goes and hides. Now Sejuani gets there, oh, Sejuani, oh, somebody follow, oh, Nars here. And now there's a fight breaking out on the other side. Sejuani now overcommits, and now they're like, oh, we have Hecker and Ulti and Urgot Ulti. So now it's just a huge chaos. Like, seriously, I don't think the players knew what was going on here. Like, everybody's just trying to master abilities and make sure that they can use everything so that at the end when they look at it, it's like well I use my ability <laughs> like, I, I did all I could <laughs> but in all seriousness this is kind of as well where Fnatic struggles and I think where AHQ just excelled really really hard Fnatic usually when they start to float and they're like ah can we go for this and can we go for that and do I have the follow-up pieces you see the Sejuani ultimate and they have Ulgot ultimate nobody really follows up and it gets in those stutter steps where Fnatic is like Oh, uh, we want to go for this, and instead Nautilus hitting, you know, the ADC, he's going for, uh, instead of hitting the support, he goes for the further away ADC, and they just want to eat too much of the cake, and, you know, in the end, they don't get anything. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing is, like, they touched on it, the Westor build, coupled with the fact that that was a chaotic fight, he got four rotations out as Fizz. That is so much damage, not to mention all the auto attacks. Like, there was always two or three people clumped together, so Am was getting a lot of uh, damage as well. That was the best way that fight could have turned out for AHQ, and it's because of all that chaos going on. Yeah, I have to say, it's really nice to watch Westor change up the play style here. As he mentioned in the interview, first game plan was Callista, let's make it a Callista-centric comp, put you on, Karthus really support him. Here they throw him into the spotlight and he does perform, which was a big question for us coming up against some of these top mid laners. Yeah, I think that he definitely rose to the occasion here, playing the Fizz, playing the signature champion for him. And the fact that he's able to get the flanks like this, and he also pushed out the bottom wave to create turret pressure. So that was a fight that AHQ, they were looking at for a little bit, and they were like, okay, if we do bring Westor up, we win this fight because the way it started going after Mountain jumped back in. Or if he doesn't come to that fight, he just pushes bottom turret and then they stall and they get that for it. So I think that his decision making in this game is really good. And we're not seeing the typical 4-1 push that he just permanently seems to do in most games. I love the adaptation from Fizz. He must have been listening to us in the analyst desk because he had the Hecarim Nar matchup the first time around, went the Randu and Spirit Visage. This time he rushed a Frozen Mallet. And he was actually able to contain Huni somewhat. I mean, he had some questionable teleport plays around the map, but it was still effective in that last fight as well. You know, it was a little bit hectic and undecisive from Fnatic. Whether they want to engage, if you're an Urgot and you start getting slowed and slowed, you kind of get the feeling that you need to be doing something and not just staying on the outskirts of the fight slowed. On well, behalf of the analyst S, I'd like to uh, <laughs> accept that victory for AHQ. Is yes. this, this is essentially what we just said. For, much, for yeah. America as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry, I cut you off there. Well, Gigi. phonetic, man, sad. But hey, I think AHQ played a really good game. And I was actually a little bit worried because they let the Hecarim remote, which is the Huni champion. This is something you really don't want him to play because it's so scary. We banned it like two, three, four games against them. and. Um, when he plays this champion, he's so strong. You saw him like stroll around the map, putting so much pressure on themselves. And Fnatic was like, "Well, we are not that strong." But Huni was like taking mid lane Ooh. tower. His so TPs, he, yeah, His TPs are really good at and, the start. And we said it in the beginning, like Fnatic is a really flank orientated team. And what every team fight kind of started off was uh, Huni TPing behind them, going for the carry and. Either way, popping the spell sheet right away from CVR and then following up with ultimate or just hitting the E right away. All right, I got to jump in here before we hit break. I want to shift gears to our next match, SKT versus EDG. We're going predictions. Spawn, we're starting with you. EDG are going to win this game. This is going to be very one-sided. 
Wow, Ooh. strong Ooh. words. All right, Sheepy, do you agree? Disagree? Where are we? I at? agree. I think uh, that they have Easy Hoon and not Faker. I'm going to the uh, Church of Faker, but if it's Easy Hoon, I think that Pawn will have a really good time and uh, no, will no, just no. all pressure. My religion is now Easy Hoon. He's the <laughs> hidden gem right now of Korea. You know, this guy is good. He may play these these uh, passive champions, but he plays things like Cassidy. I mean, he may not have as much success, but he he gets to learn from Faker and practice. Against this guy, so I think he's no slouch, and I was disappointed with Pawn's performance against Westo. You know, he tried to roam too, a little bit too much and do too much. So uh, I think SKT's got it. All right, yeah. finally to you, Irene. I got to go with SKT as well. You can't like I don't even care about Church of Faker, Church of Easy Hoon here. <laughs> you have to believe in both to be an S part of the SKT <laughs> religion. <laughs> so I definitely think Easy Hoon has this little bit of an edge with his control mages and the meta, and that Pawn plays some things that are a little bit shifted out of it at the moment. All right, well, split desk at the moment. Let's see who everyone at home is picking in this clash of the titans. According to LolEsports.com, 77% are voting in favor of SK Telecom. Rather one-sided there on the internets. Well, the action in Tallahassee continues. Up next on the Rift, it's heavyweights. SK Telecom T1 versus Edward Gaming. You're not going to want to miss it. Fnatic looking to start and end the day. 2 and 0 oh off a win right here. He's level 5 with Flash goes in, knocks a ton of damage on the Albus. One kill picked up. Now on the West Door. Can't quite get oh! the goal. Flash isn't enough either. Trash. Rain over goes down as well. Steal back the swap's gonna miss as well. Four kills coming through, a double for Ann. Four kills overall. Zip arms them back on in. Here comes the knockups. Bounce house in the day in the base right here on AHQ. Pick up two kills up that one. Then AHQ, they win the aggression battle.